You know, we play for elusives. We've got a little bit more flexibility. And we're not like super all in. It's less all in Fiora, but I mean, it's still an all in buff deck, right? I don't think I like too many guiding touches. I'm actually pretty happy with two. It's a tight deck. Mentor might actually possibly be a two of. Nah, with Sparklefly, he's too good. I think Chain Vest is probably a one of. Nah. What is Zoe doing in this deck? Uh, she's somewhat of an alternate win con. She is kind of a must kill unit, so she represents the ability to force removal, which is very important. And for one mana, she draws you a card and forces removal, and that's kind of insane. It works with Sparklefly too. I think Zoe is very sweet here. I could maybe see her being a two of, but I mean, Zoe does the same thing she does in every Sparklefly deck, which is she's nuts. Cool solution. All right. Seems good. I mean, we're always full mulling these. But yeah, Zoe's probably the strongest of the three new champs. Like, she gets completely carried by Sparklefly, but, I mean, I still have what you're likely to go. Um, yeah, I'll play this turn one. That's fine. Bet? All right, guys. Bet. I'm late. Yeah, I think I, I might need to have additional mods, like, dedicated for bets. I need someone who's watching, like, a hawk at all times. Interesting. Okay. The Fiora Wincon is pretty good here. Nice hands, dude. I mean, he doesn't really have a great attack. I think I want to do Mentor Sparklefly here, because I can curve them. And his deck is very proactive. Woo! Wait, that's kind of terrifying. If only I had a counter to that. Wait, that's actually kind of sick. I mean, I'm life-stealing a lot, so I'm probably just chilling, but man, what a crazy hand you had there, buddy. Oh, my health. Pesky? Yeah, Pesky would work well with that, too. So Relentless Pursuit's a pretty funny draw. I mean, if he doesn't run, like, a way to deal with the Sparkle Fly, he might not be able to win this one. We don't have more buffs. It is true. It's like we don't have the standalone too. Wee! I'm happy to just discount the star chart. Why not? All right. So again, I mean, if he doesn't have a way to deal with the sparkle fly, he will lose. Please don't lose this, guys. If you guys think I'm behind right now, you truly underestimate what sparkle fly does as a card. You think we're behind here? Zoe 2. Yeah, I mean, Zoe, we can block that. 10. I mean, I think there's no reason to do anything crazy. It's like, after this combat, I can just triple gem the sparkle anyway. If he wants to sacrifice one of his units, then this Callista gets one more damage, but that would be Glimpse on this, which doesn't make any sense. All right, great. It's like, this is the kind of matchup where he needs to be running a form of interaction to be good. So Glimpse there is pretty good. It doesn't do anything crazy. Um, I think I probably have to single combat to stop that. It's like a little bit awkward, but yeah, I mean, we're fine. Is this risky? I tap under interaction, but unless he can't really have interaction here. What could he have? Mark of the Isles? Mark of the Isles would actually be sick if he had that here. That actually might lose me the game. I think this deck might actually run Mark of the Isles. I think there's no reason to take this risk. Only Vile? Yeah, we just pass. We always just pass these. He still doesn't draw with Mark though? Guys, I don't give a shit about his draw. The, the if he doesn't remove the Sparkle Fly, he loses. If he does, if, if he does remove the Sparkle Fly, he wins. It's, it, that's, that's the rules, it's that simple. That's, that's the game we play here. I mean, I'm, I'm not playing around. I'm not gonna play around single combat. Sometimes this deck can run single combat, but I'm pretty sure he's not running it in this aggressive of a version. So yeah, next turn I'm just open attacking with big boy. Star chart for spell shields. Oh, that's kind of an interesting play. I don't hate it. 
I don't think there's a slow speed punish to this unless I'm missing something. Like, his deck just isn't really interactive. Like, I mean, we're killing him this turn, guys. Sharp Sight. Yeah, his deck can run Sharp Sight. That'll make him survive a turn. Like, like we're not even life stealing. We're not just life stealing to 20. We're, we're killing him this turn, right? If they don't have a way of dealing with Sparklefly, there's no deck that can beat this. Are we killing him this turn? This is 4, plus 1, plus 1, goes up to 6, plus 2, goes up to 8, plus double goes up to Pursuit for the exact amount we need. I mean, you could argue it's too risky doing that. Like, using my gems here taps me under Bastion, which might be trolly, because Bastion is how we beat um, Sharp Sight. So I shouldn't try to kill him this turn, but I usually can. Pre-Bastioning. There's a consideration to pre-Bastion. I guess that's a bit better. Yeah. This is safer, so. No reason to try to kill him this turn just because it's a bit risky. If you still need a Gamba mod, I could try. I already lost most of my points anyway, smile. But yeah, I mean we had lethal there if we wanted to risk it. Pursuit might actually be kind of bad for me. Alright. I mean, I'm at 15 on healing more. Maybe he could do something scary here? I don't know. I'm not seeing too much actually scary. Like, I have a hand that's uh, just quite nice here. I think he's realizing his attack is no good. Alright, sure, seems good. Technically safer. <sighs> you can glimpse and win? Well, we've got single combat for that. So his single combat does nothing. It peels off my Bastion? That's kind of interesting. Uh, if he's got a second single combat. I mean, I can, I can gem and then pursuit, and then I think he dies to everything. Unless I'm missing something. Yeah, this looks good. Because the most important thing is I, so he just declared the attack, which means I have next action, right? I have next action. So if he has second Callista for Black Spear, it just got activated now, but my action beats his because I gem first, right? And because I have next action, I can also use Relentless Pursuit before he can, which means if he has Pursuit, he's attacking after me too. Could be Crumble. Guys, this is an aggro deck. It's not going to be running cards like Crumble and Vengeance. He could survive this with a Sharp Sight. That is, that is the one actual thing. Like, if, if he actually has Sharp Sight, if we're getting trolled and he takes the Callista block, then I I might have an issue there. I don't know. Is that fine? Sharp plus pursuit. I mean, we actually lose the sharp pursuit hands. I don't know. I, I guess I'm actually supposed to just pass here because my odds are just better when I have single. Seems good. All right, great. Now we can attack here. Again, seems good. Because now we can beat Sharp with something like single combat. Alright. So that play looked really, 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 really weird. It looked it looked bizarre. Because we used a Relentless Pursuit and then passed. Um, but we had to do that. Because we have the ability to play around some hands there that have the ability to beat us. Like Sharp Sight plus Pursuit. If we didn't pursue there, he would pursue first, and that could actually, with something like glim like with a sacrifice like sharp side or something, that could actually potentially win him the game off of like a flip, because we can't pursue back. Our pursuit stops him from pursuing, and I mean it's just slightly safer to play around at that point in the time. Like once he passes, there's no reason for us to attack that turn. But yeah, for those of you who, for those of you guys who are uh, wondering why everyone was freaking out about Sparkle Fly. 
being a card, this is why. Like, Kinko Lifeblade was a really, really good card back in the day, and it costed four mana. This is a two mana Sparkle Fly, which is very insane. So this is the Fiora Targon Mirror. He's not running the Zoe version. Zoe feels fine here, but if he plays Fiora, it is a bit of a liability. We have to assume he's playing Fiora or he's already ahead. I think I have to mulligan Zoe in this matchup and just go all in on the win condition. The question is whether the elusive condition or Fiora is better. We have to assume he's running three Sparkle Fly. I think I have to keep Fiora just because it's too risky not to. If I don't draw a unit, we could lose. But I do kick Zoe in this matchup. Why not Blade Keeper in the other Fiora deck? Because the other Fiora deck is less dependent on drawing permanent buffs. Because Fiora doesn't necessarily need permanent buffs as much as uh, Sparklefly does. Way. And also because that deck's running Take Heart to kind of like effectively do the same thing in that slot. I can play Fiora open here, right? It's safe. I have faith in Swim. I mean, we've won a couple games. Will I win this game? Let's see. Let's see how stacked this bet's gonna be, guys. Let's see. So damage is more of a win condition in this deck than the other one. So there's kind of an argument to take this attack here, but I'm still not going to. We want to burn his mana, not let him play a unit that's safe from our challenger. Priestess in his version. I guess that makes sense if you're not running Zoe. I'm not a fan of Priestess in this deck, personally. Like I said, Sparklefly is your entry, not Priestess, right? But I mean, it's probably gonna do pretty well right now. It's a, a pretty scary card in like, you know, in the mirror where he could get Comet as well. So in this case, I probably have to be priced in to diversify my threats. I think it's fine to like have the board clear before I stand alone, just because we want to play around Comet. I could see that being a misplay though. I want to actually develop a wide board here and it feels like kind of impossible that the board won't trade down, but the fact that I have two in hand means maybe it's How not worth it. it so Alright. What? Double pale? I guess I'll block that. I mean... It's literally just double pale, right? Am I missing something? Pale Hush. I don't actually really care if he kills my Fiora here, I think. Repost? We beat Repost. It's just one damage. It's not about the damage. It's about, I actually want to trade on the board here. Repost? Guys, trading Sharpside for Repost is fucking amazing. Are you kidding? Repost is insanely important in this matchup. Why would we ever mind trading Sharpside for Repost? If he has like Sharpside Pale or Sharpside Hush, we can do our own pale here, I think. Our own pale here. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I think I'm fine with this. Let him waste cards. I think his cards are more valuable than mine here. I think my win condition is gonna be elusives because he's not running the like he's not running the Zoe to block. This does allow his Solar Priestess to survive this. Hmm, I wonder if that matters. We want to lose this Mentor so that we can go for the standalone. We are sometimes losing to hands that can actually like block enough elusive damage. That's kind of one thing. Zoe levels 100% here. Zoe, Zoe might level here. Sharp Sight. We already forced one Sharp Sight out. That's why we took that block. So, I mean, hopefully he doesn't have another one. But yeah, I mean, if he's got like good hands like that then that's that is pretty terrifying like a lot of flushes and a lot of sharp sides do kind of mess us up here so i mean it does look like a pretty good pursuit i don't know we kind of want to pursuit for a bit more damage potentially but i think it's just kind of like the safer pursuit we're getting Is it actually worth uh, star charting here as well? Ooh, I think it is actually. Star chart can actually hit something that matters. Like bull or snake, I will both take here. I think it's snake. Crescent strike, ooh, crescent strike might be necessary actually. 
Yeah, it's gotta be Crescent Strike. He did just draw the big Fiora in his hands. He did. Okay. Okay, is a 5-5. Five, five, four charges. And we forced one Sharps out of his hands. Let's see what he does. I mean, he'll eventually have to do something with his Mentor. If he didn't block it before, he's not blocking it now. He's just saving the Mentor so that his Fiora might have something to try to kill. Of course, if the Fiora actually goes for the Mentor, well, then we have the single combats, which are a pretty big deal. So he plays the Fiora at the 5-5. Five, five. The question is, is Crescent worth using here? And I think it does have to be. I think there's just no way around that. We can beat, like, Bastion Hands as well. There's nothing weird. Use Paddle Star. Oh, wait. I could have actually just used Paddle Star instead. That's interesting. I think if I get this out of the way, though, he's less likely to play it, but... Yeah, that's, like, more mana efficient. I wonder about that one. I think it's definitely safer to use this, though. Like, I might need the second Zoe. This costs less mana, so it's better later. Ooh. Homie, did you just lose? I don't know if you wanted to do that. Bro. I mean, if he hushes us, we're no good. Where's our Bastion, huh? I don't know, we forced that one hush. If this guy actually just drew both, then he's just a better player. And there's just nothing we can do about that. I could pale right now and hit Bastion, but... And if he doesn't have any burst poppers... Ooh, I think I do pale. I think that is actually worth it. He's done the Fiora. For Sharp Sight? I mean, there's not much at slow speed that hurts us. I don't know. I mean, Bastion is kind of the scariest thing. I, I like, I, I, or sorry, Bastion on me is, is the one that beats the scary thing. So I can, like, I can gem cascade into it, but it's just, it is kind of low odds of drawing Bastions. It's probably a better payoff. I think I just do this. We might have to bubble trouble now, though. I wonder if we do. I don't know. I think we're playing into too much, though. Because, like, he still has the... Oh, no. He used the Solar Priestess thing. Like, if he has second Sharp Sight, then we can try to use Double Trouble. Okay. So, it commits the mana, though. We don't really have amazing protection. We've got basically the one standalone. Could be, if it's concerted, we're good. All right, great. GG, buddy. Okay. So yeah, that was a pretty dicey game. Um, But that's why we run a Zoe in the deck. Again, Zoe's position in this deck is pretty important, right? Sometimes we win the game like that, but for the most part, what she is, is she's a one mana elusive that de she deals a bit of damage. She draws you one and she forces removal. And that's really important because in most games, forcing removal onto like the Sparkle Fly or the Fiora, it, you know, forcing removal away from those is good. So like sometimes she'll win games like that, but mostly I actually prefer it if she forces removal. Um, I also want to talk about like why I took that block with the Solari Priestess. It ba the only things in his hand that actually punish that block are basically things that he could get more value out of later, right? Like when when we force that block and we got we got both sharp sight and hush out of his hands, we ended up winning the game off of that. And of course, you know that that is partially. I I, I think that was probably wrong of him to do that. But if he doesn't do that, then we just got a free block anyway, right? So that's why we took that block. And the reason we gemmed into pale before the attack was if we draw bastion then i think we beat any hand except for second sharp um so that one was kind of tight we almost lost that one